It was definitely a challenge to learn the Quran language. It's very different. It's, um, it's an Asian language and it's just very short syllables. And it's tonal as well. There's quite a few tones. And so it's kind of hard. I'm not, I didn't get like amazing at the tones, but it, people could still understand me okay. It's, the alphabet is very similar to Burmese, which is these very swirly letters with tones written at the end. Um, but the grammar was very different. And it was very different from Thai as well. And the grammar was, was similar to English. But, um, I don't know how to describe all the phrases. You would say them different. You'd almost say them like the same order you would you, um, make an English sentence, but then just switch certain parts of it. So, how I learned the language, we just had like two books we'd use, and then I would write down, I would write down like, the restoration, the first lesson, in the most simple phrases and sentences I could, just to make it like a short lesson, a few simple sentences, and I would bring it to a member who spoke English and Korean, one of the like teenagers typically, and they would just help me translate like each sentence one at a time. So then I would just study that, and I would study that sentence, and I would memorize it so I could teach the lessons almost memorized and then just try to add in different questions and I would learn um, different phrases that I could change a little bit to bear my testimony. It was tricky to learn and I still don't feel like I understand the grammar 100% because it was hard for people to explain it to me. Um, the, so I'll give an a example of what it sounds like. It's just like short sounds, so it almost sounds like how a young child speaks just with like short little syllables. So if I was bearing my testimony, I'd say, Yathenya gasaywa ebwa doma. So it's just short syllables. Uh, when I would come up to, on the street to meet someone, I would say, Halege yamime echepa namidile. And just, so that's how, that's what it sounds like. Uh, the tones are a little tricky. Uh, the language is, is written, but it's hard to find materials. So we didn't have much. I did get a dictionary eventually. There are a few dictionaries. And I tried to, my companion and I, my companion was native Quran. And so in the MTC, she just practiced her English a little bit more. She'd been in the U.S. about six years, I think, when she went on her mission. So her English was pretty good, but she got some English materials in the MTC. And we used those and translated them into Quran. So it would be easier for missionaries after us to learn how to teach the restoration, to learn a lot of the church words, and to learn a lot of phrases. So we had them and we just write them all out in, in Quran. So other people would be able to learn faster than I did. And in the MTC, you can't learn Quran in the MTC. That's why you get called English to this mission. And then um, when you get there, maybe if, you, if, you're, if you're in that area or if there needs to be another Quran missionary, you might just get randomly asked to learn the language, which is really exciting, really a challenge and really fun. Um, the missionaries just helped each other a lot, helped each other learn it, practice it, teach it to each other, and then we, the members helped us a lot. The language, Quran people um, typically could read Quran and help us a lot. And typically, they understood the grammar as well. There's two different dialects of Quran, so sometimes it was a little tricky, and we'd run into people that couldn't understand us, and we didn't understand them. The one is called the Sha Quran, and the second one is Po Quran, and they're different, but I believe they use the same alphabet.